So one of the things I noticed when I got this house is that I have these sweet lights under the cabinet. Right here and right there. But not right there. I wonder why. So I looked under and uh, yeah, um, that's not good. So somebody never put that stuff back on. So luckily I've bought myself a nice LED one and I might rip those out and get these nice LED ones if I like how the unit works. They're really only about $20. So, assuming I like it, I'll probably go ahead and get rid of these fluorescent units, which I, I hate fluorescent lights. Uh, I've already actually replaced every other bulb in the house with LEDs. They're so much better. Just to give you an idea, if we go over here to the dining room, my table should be here Friday. This uh, chandelier alone used 540 watts. Now that I've switched it to LED, it's using about 90 watts. So let's go ahead and uh, see what it's like to install this baby. I don't think it's going to be that bad. So first we're going to turn that off. And I know, you know, normally you'd go to the breaker box, uh, you'd turn it off, you'd um, be much safer than I'm being. There's nobody else at home. Um, I don't have a good way to lock that out, but there's nobody else home, so I, I shouldn't be in much danger here. And I have tested that these wires do indeed go off uh, when I turn that switch off, so we're safe. So just to give you guys an idea of how this is gonna work, essentially I'm gonna disconnect this. I'm gonna punch this hole out right here. We're gonna use that for our wiring. This black is hot, so that's gonna go to the black there. This white is neutral, that's gonna go to the neutral there. And this green is ground, well green and yellow, and that's gonna go to the bare wire right there. So once, and we're gonna try to get this thing as flush back, as flush back as possible. When I'm done, it should just make for a nice clean, uh, clean glow. And if I like it, like I said, I'm gonna replace the others. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that screw out so I can disconnect this wire right here. So the wire is now disconnected and this green yellow wire is the ground. So if you guys don't know about electronics, uh, the reason Anything that's a metal case, like your computer or like a light fixture, the reason it has this bare copper uh, or this green wire right here, and the reason you see this three prong uh, setup on these uh, regular outlets, the reason is that things with a metal case could have a short. Let's say this hot wire touches this and the paint's stripped and it gets a real good contact and then I touch something else and I get you know, zapped pretty good. So the whole idea with this green wire is that it's always connected to the chassis. You know, that's why it was connected up here with this little screw. And if you ever create a ground fault, it, it goes to the same place as the regular neutral wire. It, it goes back to the breaker. But the idea is if you ever create a ground fault by touching the hot to the case, you will trip the breaker. That's, that's the whole idea. So if you've ever accidentally grounded something out like that and you've seen the breaker trip, that's, that's what's happening. And uh, just to point out, it is very important that you use that wire. I know you can run this thing without it, like you could just do it on these two wires, but you shouldn't because if this hot wire touches something, it can really fry you. What we're going to do is we're going to punch that hole out on the side. That's going to be where all our wiring goes, see? See how that's going to go? And once that's all in there, that creates our beautiful glow. Oh, and one thing to clarify, in case anybody doesn't know how to punch that out, you can push real hard with your thumb. If it's being stubborn, just go at it with your screwdriver. Hold, you know, hold it so you don't damage the wiring and just give it a good pop. These are really easy, you just literally yank on these things with your fingernails and there they go. This little wire will connect to this guy here this other ground will connect to that guy there and uh, that'll be it. Guys, I decided to grab a couple more tools before we proceed with this install. Um, I grabbed a drill. Essentially we're going to drill the first hole where we think we want um, the plate and the way we're going to line it up is actually pretty simple. So first we're going to just pop it kind of square in the middle like where the hole lines up and uh, then we're just going to make a mark. And uh, once we've done that, we will simply know where to make the second mark once we've got this one screwed in. There's no reason to do a whole lot of fancy measuring 
It's uh, it, it's just simple enough to make use the first hole and then level out and find the next hole. A lot of times people try to measure from like the countertop up, and I don't recommend that because you don't know how even things are. You don't know how even the counter is, how even anything is. Or similarly, they'll measure from the back out if they're going horizontally like we are. And again, things are not necessarily plumb. It's just get the first screw in, then make the thing level, then put the second screw in. It's, it's a no-brainer, super easy. Right, I'm gonna move the camera back a little so you guys can get an idea of what this is like, but essentially, I'm gonna take this thing, move it on. Pop everything through. Now make sure again, like I said, that the stuff is off. I recommend turning the breaker off. I'm being lazy, but it's only because there's nobody else at home. So I'm not worried that a kid's gonna run up and turn, uh, you know, turn the power on. Right there. All right guys, so it's mounted in. All we've really got to do now is use the wing nuts to get the electrical all tied in together and uh, reassemble. So, and then clean up because I made a little bit of a, I don't know if you can see, but I made a little bit of a mess. We're gonna take the neutral, made it with the other neutral. Turn the wing up. See, easy peasy. Now we're gonna take the the green ground, and we will just go ahead and uh, get that in there too. Again, super easy. All right, so black to black for hop. Now guys, one thing I'm gonna do before we reassemble everything is make sure that it actually works. So we're gonna take this part now normally this needs a ground too, but again, we're just doing a really quick test. There we go. Alright, moment of truth time. We're gonna plug the switch. Yay! We wired it up right. Still no ground on that one on. Don't leave it like that because it's dangerous, but it's just a test right now. We're gonna put that mess inside the box there. We're gonna reattach the green wire, the ground hanging down right here with a little set with a little screw. Little screw we got right there, and uh, we're gonna just pop that cover back on. I don't know, maybe 10 minutes to install. Um, again, it was already pre-wired, uh, which made it a lot easier. Like I was saying, if if you are gonna build new cabinets, like these are still pretty good shape. These are Kenmore, they're pretty nice. But if you're gonna do new cabinets, go ahead and pre-wire everything, or have your electrician pre-wire everything. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and finish up. So now it's the shove all the crap inside of there and hope it still works part of the game. This is exactly why we have grounds, by the way, guys, because you are kind of shoving all this relatively heavy gauge copper inside the container here. And, you know, if something comes loose, you're going to be really happy you have these grounds. Um, that's why we have a neutral and a ground. Um, anyway, just something to think about. Get in there. Stay. Almost. All right, I think that ought to jam in there. So now, we'll get a little screwdriver action. We, uh, I hate having big hands and being kind of clumsy. I can never be a surgeon. Let's put it that way. So, we'll flip it on one more time to make sure everything's still good. 
And if it is, we're just popping the cover on. Yep. Let's get that cover on it. And it's important not to not to screw up any of your wires. You know, don't don't get them jammed inside the cover or between the cover and the chassis. Yeah. That's uh, not advisable. Now let's make sure it still works. Hey, what do you know? It works. The only thing left to do now is some final cleanup and put our tools away. I decided I will go ahead and buy two more of these lights. It was just such a nice experience installing it. Um, and I hate fluorescence and I just don't even want to deal with those enclosures and their ballasts. Mm -hmm.